Hey guys, it's Chelsea, and today I am here with a very special and very exciting guest to celebrate 150,000 subscribers, and that is Jean Chatsky. Yay, Woo! for 150. Congratulations. We're very excited about it. So Jean is actually the financial editor of the Today Show. She's also the host of a very awesome podcast called Her Money, and she has a new book out called Age Proof. And since a lot of you are kind of in the post-grad, about to be post-grad, just became post-grad era, we thought that we would talk a little bit about her advice for what to do when you're sort of entering the adult world, financially and professionally. So first and foremost, as someone who has what I think we would all kind of consider a very cool career, how did you get into it when you graduated college? I didn't get into it when I graduated college. I mean, that's the, that's the real answer. So I was a journalism major, although not really a major. I was an English major in college at a college that didn't really have journalism. So you actually didn't start out intending to work in finance or money? No, in fact, I um, came into magazines coming out of college. I did a lot of journalism work while I was in school. Uh, ended up with a job at Working Woman Magazine, working for the business editor, and really liked that. I liked writing about companies. I liked writing about careers. I liked using numbers to tell a story. And when I got out, I really wanted to go to another business magazine, like a Forbes or a Fortune or a Money, and I couldn't get a job to save my life. So I floundered for a little while. I went to cooking school. Eventually, I got a job on Wall Street in equity research and um, learned about finance, I'm enough to get a job at Forbes when I came back out. And then from Forbes, I moved to Smart Money. I was there as personal finance finance was really coming into its own and people were finding, oh my gosh, I have a 401k and I need to know what to do with it. So I, I uh, got on TV as part of the launch of Smart Money and, and stuff. I've been on the Today Show now for 22 years. A lot of the opportunities that have come my way have definitely come my way because of the Today Show, so I'm very grateful for that. Something that we've talked a lot about on the show is how it can be difficult for young people, and especially women, to really kind of like assert their value, to know what they should be earning, to know what they deserve to be paid. And is that something that you struggled with at all, or is that something that you were just like really good at right off the bat? No, not really good at right off the bat. We didn't have the tools to know what we should be paid like people do now. I mean, the nice thing about the internet is I can do a nice little search and I can kind of figure out about what I should be paid. But no, I was never um, particularly good early on at asking for more money for me. It took me years to get good at that and to feel unapologetic about it. And right. so I understand. I mean, it was, we still see studies every single year. You know, you compare new women doctors to new male doctors, and the women, we still are not asking for more. And we just need to get better at that. So what would, from, from your view, what is a good sort of strategy or a good mentality for, you know, a young woman going into her first salaried position who wants to feel like she's getting what she deserves but doesn't really know how to go about that professionally? I do three things. First, I would do the research online. I mean, figure out what other people in this job, both men and women, are earning. I would talk to people who currently have the job. I mean, if you went through med school, for example, you know other people who are a year ahead of you. If you went right. through any kind of a course curriculum, you know other people who are a year or two out, talk to them. Ask them, you know, what are you earning and what are other people earning and do you feel like that's a fair number? And try to wrap your hands around it and then practice. Like, these are not easy conversations to have. You have to hear yourself saying the words enough times right. that you can just say the words. Like it's, That it feels natural to yeah, say it. Yeah, that it, that it feels natural and, and that the person on the other side is not going, even if it doesn't feel natural, that the person on the other side thinks that it feels natural. Yeah. And then try not to throw out the first number. You know, anything that you can do not to, but but no, I, my husband is in HR. He always says that he never throws out the first number, right? Well, somebody's gotta throw out the first number. And so you're gonna, you're gonna wanna play this game where you're not necessarily throwing out the first number. Maybe, you know, you can get them to give you a range and 
never accept the first offer, never. So what are some of the steps that you think that every post-grad would really benefit from taking financially, particularly if they're kind of entering the workforce and want to make sure that they're protecting themselves as much as possible and giving themselves more flexibility to, for example, negotiate a salary? The flexibility to negotiate a salary or to do something that you really want to do rather than the thing that pays you the most is a matter of living leanly enough to give yourself the room to do those things. And so that kind of ties into not spending up to your limit, whatever your limit happens to be. There are really only a few things that you need to do year in and year out with your money in order to be successful. You gotta earn some. You've gotta spend less than you make, which people have trouble with. You've gotta save and then invest what you're not spending and you've gotta protect it. And so if we look at okay, I'm gonna earn some money, I'm gonna try to spend less than I make. The more that you can sock away, the more freedom you're buying yourself for down the road. And that could be freedom to travel, it could be freedom to buy a house, it could be freedom to take a different career path, it could be freedom to leave a bad relationship. I mean, it's just, you know, savings equals freedom. And so, My overarching advice is whatever you're earning, try to save 15% of of any of that. If you can't get to 15%, and sometimes it's really hard. We've got expensive rents in cities. We've got big student loan bills. We've got credit card bills. You know, we have competing obligations. If you can't get to 15%, start where you are. It could be 2% and then just try to bump it up by 2% every six months or so or every time you get a raise. Try to bank some of your windfalls. You'll get a tax refund. Try to put some of that away. And sooner rather than later, get into a retirement plan and start funding it. Um, If you've got one at work that you're eligible for, as soon as they tell you you're eligible, just start kicking in the money. You won't miss it if it's not in your paycheck. And put it to work. So something that really strikes me about your path from college into your career now is that it definitely took a lot of turns that you didn't anticipate, that it didn't look like what you thought it would look like. So I'm wondering what your advice might be for someone who has a really firm idea of what they want their career to look like and how they can sort of not give up on it, but also not be so married to it that they can't function, (laughs) that they can't sort of like, you know, enjoy the career that they're able to have, you know? I'm tempted to, you know, let it go. (laughs) Let it go. Um, You don't have to let go of your dreams. What you do have to do is be willing to walk through the doors that open. Because sometimes those doors are great. You know, sometimes they may not be anything that you ever anticipated, but they could be better. If you have all of these, and and I say this having been one of those people, right? I was going to get married by this age, have a kid by this age. You know, I had it planned out. And I, I remember the night before college graduation telling my friend Kevin, I will do this and I will do this. And I, those things then become roadblocks that get in your way and cause you to feel like a failure even when you're succeeding in so many other ways. So it's really interesting that you're talking about, you know, creating that opening to kind of take the opportunities that are given to you and allow your career to shape itself to an extent because we talk a lot on the channel about how the gap that you create, like you were saying, between what you can spend and what you do spend is also in in my mind very similar to the gap between what your expectations are for your life and what you're actually able to accomplish in your life and the wider that gap is. It's sort of the opposite of money. Because like the wider that gap is, the more you'll feel like a failure, even if you're doing things that are sort of objectively great. So what are some of the tangible steps that you think people can take to not give up those dreams, but sort of reduce the expectation gap between this is exactly what I want and this is what I have? I think people really need to listen to the feedback that they're getting because sometimes that feedback is telling you about things that you're actually really good at that you didn't realize you were really good at. So, you know, accept that. And I like benchmarks rather than big, huge goals because I think benchmarks are more achievable and 
I also know that as far as personal happiness goes, as long as you're making progress toward whatever that elusive future might be, as long as you're seeing that you are marching down the road, that's what gets you to the happiness. And in fact, sometimes getting to the end of the line is a bit of a letdown because you don't know where you're going to go from there. So there you have it. Some of Jean Chatsky's best strategies for staying sane and making the most of your post-grad years. So as always, thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to go to thefinancialdiet.com for more. Bye.